Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything, and I'm coming at you with another Wargaming and Miniature video. In this video, we're going to be painting a dragon. We're going to be painting a dragon uh, for my D&D game. Uh, it is going to be a blue dragon. But in the process of painting a blue dragon, what I want to show you is kind of a size comparison of creatures in D&D, in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, you do have your, and specifically dragons, uh, you have your medium-sized creatures, which are uh, based on a one-inch base, right? That's your medium. So this would be either a wormling or a young dragon, right? It will be on a medium-sized base. Uh, and it would be about this big. Let me compare them to a like another D and D figure, so you can kind of get an idea. All right, this is a D and D Dungeons and Dragons half orc paladin, and as you can see, he is also on a one inch uh, base, and this wormling is on a one inch base. So anything less than maybe a horse size would be considered medium. When you start getting into horse sizes, you're starting to get into the large creatures. Okay, this is medium. There is a smaller one, and then there's also a tiny one. Uh, but they all wind up being like 20 millimeter or smaller. And But the medium is based on a one inch square. Okay, so we'll put that just barely off to the side. And we'll put that right there for size comparison. Now we're going to the next step up. That's the large dragon or what's called an adult dragon this is an adult dragon okay it's an adult white dragon obviously and it is uh, on a large base which is two inches across okay and so you get your size comparison you know with the with the dragons and you also get the kind of a size comparison with the half work right okay so that is your Half orc, medium sized dragon, which is your, it's a black dragon, but it's your um, wormlings and your young dragons. This is an adult dragon. All right, now you start getting up in the sizes, you start going into what's called an elder dragon or a ancient dragon. Uh, well, maybe not even an ancient dragon, just an elder dragon. Uh, these are huge creatures okay these have three inch bases you can see the three inch base it is even bigger now these are both white dragons so you can compare them size wise this would be your adult dragon two inches and then your elder dragon would be the three inches okay and you can kind of see size wise that one is much bigger not much bigger but definitely bigger than the other right Okay, and then the dragon we're going to be doing today is going to be bigger than huge. It's going to be gargantuan. Okay, so gargantuan needs a 4 inch by 4 inch base. And you're noticing that I've got these 4 inch bases here. Okay, so let's go ahead and open this up. I'm going to open it from the bottom. I got this at Hobby Lobby for $4.99. Uh, you know I buy a, a lot of stuff at Hobby Lobby. Uh, $4.99 for four paint palettes. These are paint, uh, what do they call them? Canvas, or canvas boards. But I noticed that they were exactly 4x4. Four four. I bought some circles, but the circles were only about 3.5 inches. Yeah, you could use a 3.5 inch circle, just like that. I wish I could have found a 4 inch circle. Now, I could have created my own 4 inch circle. Uh, just get you know, just draw a circle on a piece of, like, PVC or something like that. But I decided against it. I decided to go ahead and get this. Oh, wow, they're individually wrapped. They're $1.25 for one because it's $4.99 each. Okay, so that is individually wrapped. Now, I can leave it wrapped like this, but I'm not. I'm going to peel that off because I'm going to paint this black because I'm going to paint it like that, right? And then I might flock it or texture it or something like that. I just don't know what I'm going to do with it just yet. But there you go. Now, I've got some bigger one of these that I normally paint models on. I've got these 18-inch uh, by 18-inch uh, canvases, and I use those to do my spray painting. 
You've probably seen that before on some of my videos. Okay, so this now winds up being a four inch, uh, four inch square, right? Okay, let's kind of put that off, put it over there, put that over there. Okay, so this is a four inch square. Now I needed to find a dragon that was gonna be bigger than that, uh, and one that I could paint up to make it my blue dragon. Well, at Hobby Lobby, I found this dragon. Now, of course, they don't list them like D&D dragons. They don't call them uh, red dragons, blue dragons, white dragons. But there is one called a steel dragon, and that's the one you saw me paint up as a green dragon, right? This one is, I don't even know what it is. I just wanted it to be different. Okay, it's made by this company called Mojo. Uh, batch number, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Fire Dragon. Okay, there you go. It's called a Fire Dragon. Let me get out my X-Acto knife. Let's cut this tag off. Yeah, now the Blue Dragon is not a Fire Dragon, right? And I could just leave this or buy a second one and just call it a Red Dragon, you know, because Red Dragons are Fire Dragons. So I could call this a Red Dragon and say, hey, great, Red Dragon. Looks good. Looks good on the table. I could just pop this rubberized kind of I could put this on the table and say, hey, there you go. Didn't want to do that. But I'm, co I'm size comparison it with my Elder Dragon. This dragon is bigger than that one, right? Much bigger. I mean, he's a good size bigger. Okay. So with the four inch base for Gargantuan Dragon, looking at the feet, the feetses, the feetage, feet placements. Looks like it's going to fit pretty good. Looks like if I lined it up, you know, on the on the base, it would look good. I could always put it diagonally. It does not really matter that much. Um, I could put it diagonally on there, and then all the all the feats would be on the base. And that, with the head and the body kind of turning like this, it kind of still looks like this would be the front, right? I mean, to me, it does. I mean, I could, I could tweak it a little bit just to make it even more pronounced that way, you know. But that's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to glue it on just like that. Now, I've considered gluing this directly to this and then painting it because uh, then I'll have something to hold on to and I can paint it. But then I'd have to go back and paint this a totally different color again, like black with brush or something like that. And I don't know if I want to do that. I'm crying. I'm whining. Okay, so I'm not going to do that. So... Um, this dragon looks like it would be perfectly fine just the way it is as a red dragon, but uh, and FYI, um, I don't know how much you spend on your dragons out there in the world, but this was only twelve ninety nine. I mean, you can't beat that for a freaking gargantuan dragon anywhere. I don't care, and it's already pre-painted. If you want to just put this on the table, you could. It would be perfect, right? So here we go. We're gonna, and then if you're the half work you know that's that's good okay um, I'm gonna spray paint it what am I gonna do I'm gonna prime it uh, I'm not gonna prime it black and then brush paint it blue I thought about doing that I've decided to change my uh, thinking just slightly I'm gonna prime it with this Krylon primer right and it is true blue. It's glossy. Don't get me wrong. This is a gloss true blue. But I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint. And I don't mind dragons being glossy. Really. But I'm going to I'm going to paint it up glossy. Right? True blue. Gloss. And then I'm going to go. Because you can see this dragon's kind of glossy. And it looks kind of cool. I would say that this is probably not gloss. This is probably satin. It's not matte. It's kind of satin, but I don't want my. But I honestly, at the in the in the end result, I don't want my dragon to be glossy. I want it to be matte. So I am going to spray it with this as a primer, and then I'm going to go over it with a matte sealer. It's going to matte the the blue down, and then I'll go back in and have to repaint the bones and the teeth and the. Oh look at that! I didn't know it did that. That's that's cool. Okay, I didn't know. <laughs> I did not know it did that. Uh, it doesn't come out too easy either. I have to kind of pull. 
okay, I'll repaint the eyes, and then I won't so much paint the scales or anything like that, because I think that's cool. I might do like a, I'm going to put like maybe a, a wash on top of this, so then it'll get down into the cracks of all the, uh, the model. It'll look kind of like this in a way. Uh, and then it, and then I'll probably paint the the toenails or whatever um, like a black uh, it's gonna look good all right so let me go ahead and go out and spray paint this and we'll be right back all right welcome back now we what I went ahead and did was I primed this with the true blue and then I also primed this black okay and it looks really good just like that I mean I could play I would be I would be happy to play with that on the table I mean, it's just a representation of a dragon on the table, absolutely. But you know me, Mr. Everything, i got to be a little bit better than that. So, I pulled out uh, one of my other blue dragons that I have actually directly from uh, Wizards of the Coast. This is a blue dragon, and you can kind of see underneath, you've got kind of a bleached bone, kind of antique, whitish, yellow looking dry brush that someone has done uh, the teeth and the horns and there's a few little horns along the tail there you might not be able to see but there are little spiky bits all the way around there the little claw fangs around the little claws on the wings uh, I want to do that I want to mirror that on this uh, on this model now you'll notice that the Wizards of the Coast blue dragon the the protrusions on the side here I don't know if I can focus with me pulling it up that close but there's little protrusions on the side there for the same thing that you see here but in this model it's not it's still blue it's all blue there's no blue that's not bone that's blue so I'm gonna leave that blue yeah I think I'm gonna do that I'm using this as a painting guide all right uh, but before I do any of that, before I do any detailing or anything like that, I want to let you know I put some E6000, uh, E6000 glue, and that's how I glued this to the base, and I'll let this dry for a few hot minutes. Uh, you can kind of see how glossy this is. It's not super glossy, but it is a little bit glossy, and that's okay. Um, I want it to be glossy for this next step. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take some pure black, and I'm going to mix up a wash in this, uh, in this palette here and we're going to apply a black wash on this and what's going to happen is it's going to darken this color down to this or maybe close to this this looks like a Prussian blue this looks like a true blue but it's going to bring it down to maybe a little bit like this and it will get down inside of all these little cracks there's a lot of them on this on this ancient dragon there are uh, cracks all over the place and I want the black to kind of get down in those cracks um, to bring them out and I'm gonna kind of I don't want to use my highlighting pen to go directly I'm just gonna wash the whole thing mainly second secondly it's gonna dull it and it's gonna see how that's got a little sheen to it as well but I'm gonna get it a little bit darker all right so let's do that Okay, now make this black wash. You've got to be really careful not to put too much black paint. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm almost going to manually pull some black out of this paint uh, bucket. See that? Manual. That's probably too much right there. Then we take water and we put a lot of it in there. So I filled that thing, almost filled that thing with water. That thing. Black is a super thick pigment. So uh, less black you use, be real careful if you use too much black. See that? It's almost it's almost completely turned that completely black. And I just looking at that, I'm looks like I might have to do another batch or two to get this model covered. And you don't want it to be so much black that it ruins the model, right? But you don't want it to be so thin that you don't get a good coverage either. So you gotta kind of maybe sometimes experiment a little bit just to see how well it's gonna work or how well it does work. 
Okay, and then what I'm really trying to do is force it down inside those cracks. See how that black is getting down inside those cracks? All right, let me do this whole model and I'll be right back. Now you'll notice also that on these wings, they also have quite a few cracks. And so what I'm doing is I'm filling in or dry brushing. Or, well, actually, what am I doing? I'm washing the uh, cracks as well. Now there's something I wanted to mention. Uh, I forgot to mention it earlier. But before I went to spray paint this blue, I did in fact take it into my bathroom and I used soap and water to clean off any mold release or any uh, any kind of residue that might have been on it before I painted it uh, just to make sure that the blue paint would cling to it the way it's supposed to. Now you'll see a lot of this puddling, right? You're going to see, well, I just dropped it in my palm. But you'll see puddling appear from the wash on the model. And what causes that puddling is the fact that it's, I'm trying to do a wash on top of a gloss. Glosses are very slippery, so, uh, so washes tend not to go where you want them to go. So you kind of have to force them to go where you want them to go. So a little bit extra effort has to be made during the drying process that you get rid of the puddles, you know, and uh, make sure that the wash is in all the cracks that you want them to be in. Okay, so now I'm going to set this off to the side right here. I'm going to let that dry. Now, you're going to see a few puddles appear here and there. I'm okay with that. I'm actually okay. I, I thought about it for a second. I think that that will give this dragon a little bit older look too if it has like these black puddles kind of like aging spots you know like like you get from being out in the sun and you know that uh, the black dragon is a desert dwelling dragon that's his that's his fort uh, his uh, favorite terrain or if you want to call it that that looks really good that looks really good I just need to let that dry and washes have a tendency to take a few minutes to dry because they are mostly water so I just have to let that water dry and it'll take probably about 30 minutes for that to dry once that dries then I'm going to go in and I'm going to use some of this uh, vintage white and what we'll do is we'll touch up some claws and some teeth and I think I'll be pretty close to being oh maybe some underwing you know, maybe maybe underneath the wing, wing and underneath the ch chest. And I think I'll be pretty much done. Almost. Almost done. All right. See you when you get back. All right. So the black wash has dried. I've given it a, a few hours. I went to dinner and came back. And here we go. Now you take a look and you can kind of, hopefully the lighting and focus works really good with this. But you can see all the cracks now. Uh, they have that little black highlighting inside the or the wash has gone down inside the black crack inside the cracks making them really dark and along the top of the wing I don't know if you can kind of see this but there are areas where the paint and water had pooled up and then as the water dried the paint kind of thinned out and became like this gave it like a dirty dingy old look and that's exactly what we wanted now we're going to continue on with this process using the uh, vintage white which is kind of a kind of a bonish coat like a bone color but I don't think it's yellow enough I'm, I want it to be that color and you can kind of see it'll work but I need it to be just a little this looks like somebody used a very poor color on there um, I think I'm going to add just maybe a touch of yellow gold brown okay hold on a touch of sun. all right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to this is the primary color that I'm going to be working with is the vintage white but because I wanted it to be just a little bit darker 
a little bit yellower, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small amount of golden ochre into my mixture and see what turns out. All right, let's get... we're doing a, a manual mixture here. I'm going to bring it out a little bit and we're going to see about that much. I'm going to put that in my Now I'll probably put about two or three drops of this in there. Maybe two right now. Right, one drop of water or two or three. There we go. And let's stir this up and see what we get. I know you can't see that with the camera being in the position that it is. So what I'm going to do is... Wow, I think we did really good here. It's uh, not as white, and it's got a little bit of a yellow tint to it. All right, now I'm still going to continue to use the giant brush. Uh, I've got bigger brushes, like this or whatever, but I don't want to use something that big. So this is like a good compromise. All right, now, because remember, I am copying this... I want to do the belly all the way down, and then I'll use a different brush to touch up the other things. This is going to be my belly and wings brush, <laughs> if that makes sense. Okay, the main thing is under the wings. Yeah, that's going to look good. Okay, my hand's shaking, so I need to pop this up on the, on the table. And if, you ha if you're noticing, I'm taking quick brush strokes. What that kind of does is it helps eliminate the paint from creating a dry brush stroke design in the paint. But, and I'm also touching them very lightly. So it's almost like I'm just dry brushing almost. And I'm doing it super quick so it'll, and very light, very light. Except when I get close to the edge. When I get close to the part that I want to stay blue, then I'm a little slower and more careful. Another th thing you might be noticing is that I am, my brush strokes are in one direction. I am not uh, going crossways or I'm not going towards the front. I'm going from front to back on the wing. I do that on both of them. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get the underbelly of the dragon. And it's really, it's just going to be a... I don't see any lines here to stay within, so I'm just taking my cue off of this guy right here, and uh, just basically eyeballing it, and there's no like lines, so I pretty much just have to stop the paint where I want to stop it. On this model but a lot of the dragon models or other models will have a uh, scales or something on the underside if that's the case just stick to those you know lines now the different breeds of dragons do have different um, physical features uh, in D&D &D, but It's your game. It's your miniature. If you want all your dragons to have three left toes, you can. That's you. 
See, because a blue dragon is supposed to have like a rhinoceros horn in the center. And this this dragon does not have that. But that's fine. I might have put a little bit too much water in my paint, but what's what that does is it keeps the strokes that it helps disappear. It just means you got to put more than one coat on usually. By gluing it to the base, it makes it harder to get down underneath the chest. Almost impossible. But that's okay. We like a challenge. Now on this underbelly, you do kind of see a slight uh, ridge where the chest turns into the side of the dragon. It was probably created in the molding process and not the modeling process. You know what I mean? It was probably a, a tool to be able to make this dragon moldable and modelable Mo modelable is that a word I'm very impressed with the uh, the way the colors are working out um, well the camera and everything but I put the dragon model down so that it wouldn't move around while I was paint and I'm holding my paintbrush almost against the table and my hand to give it a little bit more support so it doesn't wiggle and jiggle and move around on me while I'm trying to paint straight lines and things like that. Now I want this yellow to come all the way to the tail. It's okay to be a little cautious because you can always go in and correct any mistakes that you might make. If you go in guns blazing, you might paint something that you didn't mean to paint. And then you got to go back and correct it. You know, like the old carpenters say, measure twice cut once well with paint it's kind of the same you just got to be extra careful of where you're applying the paint to unless of course you're planning on doing like a wash afterwards because if you're planning on doing that then that'll usually cover up any mistakes we're not talking about that Okay, that tail looks really good. The underside looks really good. I got yellow under the whole thing. Starting to look really good. Now you would think that I would paint this yellow, but I'm not going to. Whoops. You would think I'd paint these this ridges yellow. I'm not going to. Um, I'm not going to paint these yellow. Uh, because they look like they're part of the wing but this ridge down the top I might just do Let's use that nope that ridge is not yellow claws are black okay let's do these teeth even though I should do the inside red first and then do the teeth. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to leave this here because I'm going to use it. And I'm all 
also not going to do the teeth with this big brush. I came to my senses. <laughs> okay, I've got some Vallejo flat red. That's not what that is. <laughs> that was a red balloon. A red loop balloon. Okay. Um, not stirring it, not mixing it, not doing anything. Just put a couple of drops because that's all I'll need. Because I'm not doing a whole lot of red on this model. Just the tongue and the mouth. Not even the eyes. Okay, I don't want to grab the model because I might be afraid that I grab the yellow by accident. And that would be bad. So, here we go. Red. In. The mouth. Now, there's the inner jaw line. Uh, the, I guess, fleshy material, the muscle and tendons or whatever that hold your jaw in place inside the dragon's mouth that will, that will make a bold statement on the table when when they're fighting this dragon and this this is a dragon that is going to kill them this is just a little history it will kill them if they fight it I know my players think they can destroy the world and they're the greatest and they fear nothing. What's kind of cool is they have a couple of things in their party that prevent them from being afraid. So they're not, this creature's not going to cause them fear, but they should be afraid because one breath weapon attack would kill the entire party. And then one bite would kill a player. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe 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 two bites, but still. You got Dave out there, the barbarian fighting. His damage will be halved. So yeah, maybe three or four bites on Dave. <laughs> but everybody else, even the fighter that's got over a hundred hit points. Breath weapon does more than that all by itself. Now this isn't your standard blue dragon. This is actually a named blue dragon in my game. It's uh, this blue dragon is legendary in in the campaign. The players have never met him, never heard of him. It might be a her actually. Met him or her. Wow, that jaw is that. Egg up inside there. But uh, they'll remember they'll remember her when she's done with them. Uh, they have a giant with them, and the giant is gonna fight the dragon, allowing the players a chance to escape. Maybe, depending on what the players do. But we'll see. I'm not gonna force them to, to I'm not gonna force them to live. <laughs> if they all want to die, they can. We can make that happen. Okay, so we got the mouth, got the red inside the mouth, and now I can do the teeth. Okay. I'm actually going to use a smaller, an even smaller brush than this, uh, because I want to do the eyes as well with that same yellow. Um, but I want it to be not super fine tip, but at least more fine tip than what I was just using. Like that, you can't even see it, but it's not focused. You get the idea, and then the claws. I gotta, be, I gotta go back and get 
do the black on the claws. And this thing will be pretty much done. I'm gonna I'm going to um, clear coat it, get rid of the shine. Even though I don't think I really want to get rid of the shine, I think the shine gives it a cool effect. Maybe I won't clear coat it. All right, so I've done the outside of all the teeth. Now I need to get down and do the inside of the teeth. Because when you look through the mouth, you'll see the opposite side. Now this I gotta be a little careful because I don't want to paint the tongue or the top of the mouth. All right, so we got the mouth and you do the eyes. Now some people already know I want to do less is more on the eyes. It's hard to see exactly what the eye is. Ah, okay. It's got he's got like these baggy skin bags underneath the eye, and I almost thought that was part of his eye, but it's not. It's just a very subtle line above the bag. There we go. Okay, now we're going to get some black and we're going to do the toes. Okay, now we're doing the back toes. They're really just, they're really claws, I guess. Claw nails? I don't know what you would call them. Oh, and, okay. The back foot's got a, a, a heel claw. I need to deal with that as well. Okay, now blue dragons are supposed to be in the desert, right? So I'm thinking I want to put some sand like desert sand on this base. But before I do that, I think I want to paint the base kind of a desert sand color and then and then glue the sand on top of it. It'll make the sand look better. Now be sure to do the sides uh, even if you're not going to put any flock on the sides. Um, unless you want the sides to look black. All right, guys, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and drop a few drops of Elmer's white PVA glue into my palette. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to do uh, an equal amount of water. So it's about a 50-50. 50-50. And then I use my brush itself to actually stir the water and Elmer uh, glue mix. Okay. So then I... Oh, got it on my finger. Um, I have a box here so that when I sprinkle the grit, it will actually um, fall into the box. Any excess grit will go down into as a box. And then a lot more shaking.
Now, I'm not shaking it off of the base because what I'm letting that do now is the grit is soaking down into the uh, Elmer's that's already there. getting a good, uh, what do you call it, soaking down into the glue so that it'll get a good adherence. And then what we'll do is we'll just put this in the box for a minute, let that dry, and we'll shake it off. Okay, let this dry for about 10 minutes. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and shake off the excess sand, not too hard, just just the excess sand. And then I will recover the sand into my bucket. Oh goodness. All right, so right now we've got a, as far as I'm concerned, a complete, now I could always go back over this and dry brush it or put any other like fine details on there, but I'm not going to. I'm going to use this dragon just the way it is, and I'm going to play it just like this. And so this is the blue dragon we'll be using in the game. I hope you enjoyed me painting this for you. And uh, if you got any questions, hit me up in the description below. And uh, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, dull coat it. I'm going to leave it glossy like that because I kind of like that look. All right. I'll catch you next time.